Alright, what is up guys? It's Apollo here and welcome back to our Bannerlord playthrough. So, I've got some footage here. This is footage that I recorded because I want to show you it, but I didn't commentate over it because this is just a big grind. Uh, so at the end of the last episode, you noticed, or I showed you guys that, hey, we're at negative 300 influence and we can't do anything. We can't do anything. We can't, like, make new laws. We can't gather an army to fight enemies because you need influence for that stuff. So... I felt like I was kind of screwed, and I want to stress this, guys, to you. As soon as you have your own kingdom, you need to not raid enemy villages. Do not raid enemy villages, or you will lose, like, 200 influence. So, I was trying to figure out how we can quickly gain influence, uh, so we can go back to positive, and we can form armies and pass laws and everything, because we needed to take a city, and we only had two castles. Well, I asked you guys in the last video, I, I left a pinned comment saying, hey, how can I quickly gain influence as a king or an emperor? Because it's different as a vassal. Uh, because I was not able to donate any prisoners to dungeons. I wasn't able to uh, donate any garrison forces to cities because I could put garrison troops in my castles, but it doesn't affect my influence at all. So I saw some of you guys mention some things like, uh, try to form an alliance with another faction, then you can donate uh, troops to them. Well, I tried that, and it seems very difficult. I think the only way you can form an alliance is if you have, like, a daughter, and you, uh, you know, offer her hand to marriage, and then you can form an alliance, which I just didn't have. So, really, the only way that I saw that we were going to be able to gain influence is by battles. And I... And you need big battles, right? You need to go against enemy factions because you will get more renown for that. But I didn't know how to declare war on them without raiding their village. And if you raid their village as a, as a king or emperor, you'll lose like 200 influence. It's insane. So consider this a guide for you guys to quickly regain renown if you're like really in the hole of like negative 300, negative 200. It's pretty challenging you got to get lucky in some ways but it's mostly it comes down to fighting big battles and i'll show you how you can do it okay so the first thing i noticed was that the batanians which by the way i love i love them i didn't want to go to war with them but i noticed that they were at war with four other factions the sturgians the azurai the two empire factions everybody was killing them so i thought okay if there's one faction we can attack without getting, you know, our own cities attacked, it's probably the Batanians because they're going to be too busy fighting multiple different factions. So we could easily go up into their territory and kill them. So that was my plan. And the way I was going to do that, now remember, we can't raid villages, but you can go to a lord and simply say, hey, I'm attacking you. And it was actually really kind of sad because when I went to my first lord, he was like, oh, hey, Apollo, it's been a while. I'm like, surrender or die. He's like, what? Funny joke, right? Surrender or die. And then, and then we fought and then you're at war with that faction without taking any penalty to your renown. So it's really simple. You just find a lord, you declare war by attacking him. Uh, so, and that's, that's essentially what I was doing throughout the first like 30 minutes of this recording is just riding around fighting in these battles battles where i was mostly outnumbered against these lords and i was trying to find the batanian lords who were isolated and i was i was hunting them down and i was taking them out and uh, i would fight these battles i was getting great prisoners i was great getting great influence great loot great money so you're gonna see when we start up this episode today i'm gonna have a lot of gold and everything and a lot of prisoners so that's what we did. We just did that. And you would get around, like, depending on the scale of the battle and how big of, a, how big of an army you took on, you would get about between six to eight influence. Yeah. So, uh, still not great. 
that's still a ton of battles you're going to have to do. So if I did the math, and this is roughly the math, for me to be able to get back to zero influence, and it, let's just say I, I maxed out on influence every battle at eight, I had to fight 35 battles like this, which is a very time-consuming thing. Uh, so yeah, it's just what I had to do. Now, things did happen that gave me more opportunities, which I'll explain right here. So another way you guys mentioned on getting more influence was by taking a city and building like a forum in the city and that will generate you like uh, one influence three influence every day now I know that's a very small number but that starts to build up as weeks go on it will slowly attack you know it will slowly attack your negative influence and build up and hopefully get you to a positive influence so because my army was so small and I didn't have any influence to build my own big army getting my you know getting my companions to join me in a siege my only opportunity of getting a city is waiting for the Batanians to either either basically look for a really weak Batanian city or wait for the Batanians to attack a city take it and then we attack it kind of similar to what we did when we took our castles well lucky for us lucky for us when I was over there fighting lords and defeating armies, trying to build up our influence, I discovered that the Batanians recently conquered the Lagate. Lagate? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that, that city name right. But they conquered that city, and I went over there to check it, and it only had like 20 defenders. I go, oh, this is perfect. So what I do is I quickly siege it. And I just hope that the Batanian army is elsewhere, you know, fighting, defending, whatever. Just, I didn't want them to come near us. So I'm sieging this castle and or besieging it and we get it and I go ahead and attack because they've got like 20 troops defending it. We don't need a ton of siege equipment. We push and we take our first city. We are so lucky to be able to do that. Because now that we have this city, one, we're going to generate more income. Two, it's our, it's our first capital, essentially, because all we had were castles at this point. So we took this city, and then it has a forum in it, which now we're producing one influence every day. So this was just the best case scenario for us. And at this point, it, it was about 40 minutes into me just playing and trying to chip away at my negative influence. So now that we have this city, I saw there was a big Batanian army that was looking like they were going to try to take it back. And I felt like my army had enough strength. We were outnumbered, but I felt like my army had enough strength to take him on. And by the way taking on a big army like this but like being outnumbered two to one you will earn a ton of renown like a ton of renown so we go ahead and agree and we fight all right we fight this army and it's a great battle uh it goes pretty well we take some casualties but i'm going to show you footage of it right here i mean it was a juicy battle it was a juicy fight the archers and my horse archers honestly saved the day. It's a deadly combo of using my archers to just constantly hit at the infantry charging us. The horse archers are just always running around skirmishing them and getting kills. And then my heavy melee cav charges into the enemy infantry right before they get close enough to my archers where it buys them more time. Buys the archers more time. And at that point the enemy tends to break. So it's a great way of defeating bigger armies. So... Uh, we defeat that army. That gives us a ton of renown. And now we're looking good. We're looking good. We're still negative, but we're like negative 80 or somewhere around there. And uh, that's kind of where we're going to start this episode, this new episode at this point. So another thing I wanted to mention also is that every time I captured a lord... I released them. The reason I instantly released them was because, one, I wanted them to create more armies that I could kill and keep on, you know, chipping away at my renown. And then, two, it massively, it massively, it massively increases your charm, which is very helpful. Charm is a very important trait on, one, convincing 
enemy lords to join your side and to like marriage and whatnot. So I was just like leveling up really quickly, improving my charm. Also improving my charm, I got a trait that uh, increased my battle renown. Like when you win a battle, it, it, it increases the amount of renown I get by 20%. So that helped me out a ton in trying to climb back out and get positive renown. So I didn't expect this little like recording of me not doing commentary. You know, this like grind I was doing. I didn't expect it to be so eventful. But thankfully, you were able to watch uh, what happens instead of me just talking about it. So yeah, that's essentially how I climbed back and improved my renown. I hope they come up with a better system in the game. Uh, I don't know. It just... When in doubt, do not raid a village when you are a leader of a faction. Just don't do it. It is just, that's how you get into the negative renown hole. Anyways, I just wanted to keep you in the loop and help you guys understand like how I got to this point. But uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and dive into today's episode. Oh, by the way, this is what my face looked like when I noticed we had negative 300 influence and the only way we were going to get it up is by killing a bunch of looters. Yeah, so I don't know. I thought this was pretty funny. I was playing multiplayer and the server crashed right when I died and that was the face my uh, character was making so anyways let's let's start this all right so the first thing I want to do in this episode is I want to finally negotiate peace with the Batanians I feel so bad picking on them seriously I, I have nothing against them I actually really like them as a faction I think they got some really cool units in fact we have a ton of of Batanians in our army now and a lot of prisoners who eventually will join our army and it's awesome like I'm really glad they have really good archers and they have some de decent infantry so we got a nice mix of different forces in this army and it's really cool so also the Batanians indirectly gave us this settlement so I don't hate them I like them a lot uh, so we're also after we negotiate peace with the Batanians we're soon going to focus on our love life, our romance. Now, I was looking at a couple different candidates to try to go oh, go after. Uh, the good news is that since we released all those Batanian generals to go free, it has greatly improved our charm. So if you guys are quickly trying to improve charm for whatever reason, good way to do it is by hunting down lords and setting them free, and it will greatly increase your charm. My charm's at 56. 56 so that's pretty solid also it uh, helps you get more renown in battles which is cer certainly something I need as I'm still negative but only 89 it's not that bad so yeah uh, let me go ahead and show you the person I want to go for right here Ellis Ellis she's an older girl I mean 28 is not old in today's day and age but for, you know, a medieval world and you're trying to have children, 28 is, is fairly old. Uh, so, we're going to talk to her because of her position. She's actually daughter of the king of the Vlandians. And having the Vlandians on our side when things go down is uh, not a terrible, terrible thing. So, we're going to try to uh, talk to her quickly. Um... <laughs> She's not, she's, she's a, she's a good looking girl. She, you know, she, I think she'll do fine. She also has some good traits. Uh, she has a reputation of being helpful. That's definitely very good trait. So she was taken prisoner by the Western Empire. Okay, that's, that could be something we can kind of use, you know, when we start attacking the Western Empire. I think the Vlandians are going to be on her side. Uh, so she was last seen over here by this uh, castle. So, yeah, she was seen way over here. Now, before we just leave this settlement, because we don't really have a garrison in this, this yeah, there's only eight defenders. Not really enough to defend it, so we need to quickly negotiate peace before we can go talk to her. But in my other castles, I got them up to like 100, 100 defenders. A lot of them are recruits. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but... Isn't it like if you put soldiers in the garrison, they will get better over time to simulate like their training in the courtyard? You know, they're they're getting better as, as soldiers. So hopefully that's the case because it's mostly just recruits in the castles, which is not going to be enough to hold anything. So uh, let's get this episode started, shall we? Let's move up and go talk to 
a, a someone, a, any kind of lord from the Batanians. And we're making about 3,000 gold per turn. That's awesome. So that's perfect. Uh, we have some more prisoners who want to join us. Which, uh, we've got a lot of prisoners. Oh yeah, more Batanian, Batanian warriors. Excellent fighting soldier. Excellent fighting force. We're at 81 strength. Actually, more. We're at 100 strength. Thanks to, uh, uh, that last battle that we had where we just captured a bunch of soldiers. Not prisoners, but soldiers who wanted to join our ranks. Okay, there we go. We found a lord. I'm not here to attack you. I'd like to discuss something. What, what We should make peace. And I really shouldn't have to give you that much gold. I mean, you guys are really suffering. So, let's see. How much gold do you need? What's the most? See, it won't even let me offer. I have to pay him that much. So, 42k. That seems to be everyone's number in this game is 42k. Uh, we could, I wonder if giving them equipment, it doesn't matter, the money, we, we don't need them, we can easily get 42, 42k back, so, yeah, offer accepted, I must leave now, alright, good journeys to you, Apollo, <laughs> so after capturing and releasing all of their lords, they kinda, they really like me, you know, they like me a lot, so before we go seek our love interest, uh, which is gonna be a lot of fun, uh, let's actually go back, oh, wait, you were captured? Oh my god, that army of 300, I think they were going for our city. That was a well-timed peace negotiation. We could have lost the city right there. Alright, so we're back in the city, and we're going to try to help out the economy of the city by uh, pretty much selling all of our goods here. We have a lot of goods. After fighting all those battles, we have a ton of goods. So we're going we're gonna to do it based on value here. Oh, look at this helmet. Oh my god. Highland Noble helmet. I didn't even notice this. I'm wearing this. Oh, does it? It, it doesn't exactly go with our uniform, but but it, it's kind of like it's where we've been. You know, it looks awesome. And there's a Western longbow. Whoa, we got some juicy stuff. All right, let me keep some of this. Oval shield. Is this better than our current shield? No, it's about the same. So we're going to keep... Actually, it is a little bit better because it's it weighs less. So I'm actually going to put this on instead. So yeah. Oh, that looks sick. Look at that shield. Man, we got some goodies. I love, I love the loot. It is good fun. Well, what about this? Ooh, this looks good too. Uh, fine steel cavalry broadsword. Um, it's it weighs less, and it does pretty much everything better. So I'm actually gonna add that. Plus, we're mostly on horseback, so ooh, we're looking fresh. We're looking good. Uh, we got a bear head, armored bear skin. Is this better? No, no, it's not good at all. Well, it's it's decent, but. I'm gonna I like these little shoulder pads here that's good okay um I think everything else we're just gonna sell just make sure that we have our horses set all right yeah we'll sell everything else 43k so we just made back all the money that we lost so sweet I will collect wait trader doesn't have enough <laughs> how much is it wait what's going on here I can't uh no Okay, there we go. How much does he have? Where does it say? Uh, whatever. We'll just trade it. There we go. That's fine. Oh, he was just short. The trader was just short. Not a big deal. Okay, and then we have more prisoners that want to join us. We always got to make sure we keep up with this because I want to have as big of an army as possible. Lots of bat battalions in my army. And that's maybe that's why I wear the helmet too. Just to kind of show the, the soldiers of Batani who fight under me. That hey, you know, I respect your culture. Okay? I respect you. Alright, so we got to go to this, uh, this city. It's going to be a little bit of a travel. But we're going to go look for Ellis. Okay, so we made it to the castle. Uh, we're going to go to the keep. And here she is. I'm gonna go, oh, there's someone from the Southern Empire. Interesting. But we're gonna go talk to her and uh, try to flirt with her a little bit. I honestly have no idea how this is gonna work out. 
obviously you need the charm trade. So I'm Apollo, who are you? I'm Ellis, loyal vassal of Durthurt, king of the Vlandians. Yes, I know you. You're actually daughter of the king. Uh, I know your name. I hear you took Lagatha. Oh, oh, we're getting kind of famous around. Oh, that that little city, that little battle. Oh, it was nothing. You know, I'm just, I'm just, uh, you know, doing my job for my my kingdom. All right. Uh, my wait. Okay, here we go. Here we go. My lady, I wish to profess myself as the most. Okay. Uh, yes, we are considering offers. These are not. These things are not rushed into. Um, I wish to offer my hand in marriage. We are considering many offers. You may certainly add your name to the list. Well, you're going to make me wait in line, huh? Okay. We meet from time to time as in the custom to see if we are right for each other. I hope to see you again. Okay. All right. We got this started. By the way, th see, I love the Vlandians. They are so cool. Like, look at this keep. Look at that. All right. Um... What are you, what is the Southern Empire guy doing? Are you trying to, are you trying to court her? No, this is, I'm going to talk to her again. I think you, Apollo. Um, yeah, I think you could get right back into it. So I'm glad to have the chance to spend time together. Yes, it's good to have a chance to get to know each other. Yes. Okay. Well, these all look really good. Like really good success chances. All right. She says, they say you have traveled quite widely. Yes, that is true. I've been to many kingdoms. I've served many kingdoms and betrayed them all, but whatever. Tell me a bit about your journeys. Uh, let's see. Uh, the world's a dung heap, basically. The sooner I earn enough to retire, the better. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Is that is that really so, is that going to win a girl over saying something like that? Yeah, it's rough, but uh, it's a rough world. But there's a lot of opportunities to be seized right now if you're not afraid to get your hands a bit dirty. Um, I don't know. What can I say? It's a beautiful world, but filled with such, su that, that's a good response. We'll try this. Success. Boom. I like it. I see. Between your followers, your rivals, and your enemies, you must have a lot of, you must have met a lot of interesting people. Yes. Um, I don't know why this font here is in yellow. I don't know if this is like the most, I guess this is like the best chance here. Uh, yes, I've seen cruelty. Uh, did, would you like to believe fascinating stuff? Let's see. I've seen great, great evil. Hope the good outweighs the evil. All right, let's try this one. I've seen a great good and great evil. Okay, success. I like it. Okay, we're making progress. You might be correct. Uh, some people say uh, you will go far. Suppose you were to rise to position of power. What do you, what would you do? So, like, suppose you were to rise, oh, sweetie, I, it's, honey, <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but <laughs> I am the emperor of the empire of Calradia, okay? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I've definitely have risen some, some high places. Um, let's see, I hope to bring peace to the land, justice, and alleviate, okay, people suffer. See, I would keep going on about the suffering and stuff. Let's go with that. Success. Boom. I think she likes it. Yes, you might be correct. Well, it seems we have a fair amount in common. Perhaps we can talk more when we meet again. Okay. All right. Uh, that went smoothly. Can we talk again? <laughs> hey, I just, you know, I, I'm thinking about you. So then what is it? Something I'd like to discuss. Um, what do you think of your liege? Propose. Um, I don't know. I think maybe I'll like come back a little bit later. But I think that's some good progress uh, for, you know, for trying to win her over. Um, my only concern, if you look at, like, kingdoms, my only concern is that Vlandia, the king, has a negative five relation with me. I could try to, like, improve that. Because, you know, when time, when it comes to, like, marriage and you have to get a approved you know I, the king might look down on me and not agree to it so i don't know do we get a new quest what's this oh yeah and this conspiracy thing i have no idea what this is about i have no idea so i'm just kind of ignoring it and hope it doesn't backfire or anything like that but yeah we're we're back we got some prisoners 
And I guess what we can do is go back and kind of manage our territory until hopefully the princess uh, calls for us again. Now that's how war ban works. At least that's what I remember is like when you start talking to a future potential wife, she'll like send a message out for you and try to, you know, like you have to go to her and talk to her again and you keep doing this until she's like ready to, to marry you. But you know, I'm getting up there in age and I need to settle down and have some heir to the thrones. There we go. And uh, I'm going to keep fighting. Like, I'm going to occasionally just, like, throw my army into these, like, little battles. Because it's going to help my influence. I know it's not much. It's just one. It's usually just one influence when you kill looters and whatnot. But chasing them down is a huge help. And it will build up over time. And also, because I'm gaining plus one influence every day, it will slowly get back to positive, which is really good. It's just I can't declare war on a big faction until I have positive renown and what a journey that has been what an absolute journey uh, just the struggle of getting renown back it, it's real it's definitely real but look at that we're already at uh, 80 there and we're about to get into the 70s and pretty soon we'll be uh, positive in no time so let's just keep traveling up been captured by mountain bandits <laughs> good good all right so let's check on the uh i want to check on this castle here let's manage the garrison so looking at the garrison it doesn't look like any of these guys are getting better i i have a feeling that i'm gonna have to send troops into this castle to make them better because they're not getting better and it's been it's been a couple weeks and I so maybe that whole thing of like they'll train on their own in the castles not true so now that it's peacetime I might just take all these recruits with me and get them to at least like tier two or three and then put them back because as recruits they're not really gonna you know they're not really gonna do much now looking at this we have a, exactly a hundred defenders we have 55 garrison forces. So that 55, the garrison force, that means if I take out all of those garrison forces in there, uh, I'm pretty sure there would only be 45 left, if that's correct. So, so you have the militia that's always in there and then the garrison. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, a part of me wants to do that, put like elite troops in here. You know what? We'll do this. We'll do this. Let's, um... Which man, let's, let's start to make these garrisons a little stronger. And actually, instead of the castles, we should probably focus on getting our main city stronger. Our capital, which of course is Legate. L Leg Legate? Legate? <laughs> I never know how to pronounce anything in this game. I never know. So let's go back here and we should probably help. Oh my god, there's a lot of bandits walking around. Uh, I'm more focused on this, so I'm not going to worry about them. Let's let's go to the city and let's manage town. Uh, so the form is now being produced or constructed. So it's going to take a little while. It's like not even halfway. But once that's done, I'm hoping that's going to increase our influence as well, uh, which we're now at 77, which is perfect. So let's go. Let's manage the um, the what's he the keep manage garrison. And right now we have nothing in there. And I think what I'm going to do is put maybe maybe tier 3. I, th I think that's what we need to do. Let, let's, ha let's have a rule where tier 3 and tier 2 is what we're going to put as garrison forces. But everything that's tier 1 stays with us until they level up to tier 3. Our army is going to take a little bit of a hit. But I really want this garrison to get strong. Like this is... This is going to work out because we're going to have a lot of space open in our army. And then we're going to take all those recruits in that castle and try to train them up by hunting down looters. And that's also going to increase our influence. I know this is not going to be the most exciting stuff to watch, uh, but it is important uh, for us to kind of protect the borders, you know, or protect our, our cities and, and castles with this kind of stuff. 
Uh, so yeah, let's take everybody who's tier two. So we'll take you uh, in three. So tier two and three, you guys are gonna get in there. And w I mean, it's a lot of, it's a, hold on. We can actually level up one of you guys. We'll get back to that. Uh, but yeah, see so you're three. I'm gonna all cav. I'm keeping. I'm not gonna send any cav in there because they're, they're no use in a in a siege defense. You, they usually just dismount anyways. So let's get you in there, and then everybody else who's you know higher than those tiers or tier one is gonna stay in my army. So let's just go through here. Make sure send send the watchman. Uh, let's see, militia archer. Let's send you in there. Uh, we can upgrade you guys to a skirmisher, and then boom. And then get you in there. So a lot of, but you know, a lot of Batanians are going in there. Let's get this footman. There we go. Very nice. I think that's pretty much everyone. We'll put you in there too. Oh yeah. So we're losing a lot of great infantry, but this is a solid garrison force. Like it's really solid. Uh, so let's just double check, make sure. Okay. I think that's everything. So there we go. And we still have 89 people in our army. You know, that's that's still really good. So now what we need to do is go back to our castle. And we're going to go get those recruits. And we're going to throw them into a bunch of battles. I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'm not going to micromanage it. I'm just going to send in the troops. I'm not even going to fight it. If they die, they die. I can always get more recruits. But the good ones will survive. And we have more prisoners who want to join. Excellent. Excellent. Those are more archers. So let's get moving. So yeah, I think that's a good rule. What do you guys think? Do you think having like tier two and threes defending your castle is pretty good? Uh, you could always put better troops in there as well. You know, like tier fours and stuff if you can afford it and if you can manage that. Uh, but let's go to manage garrison. And I want all 34 of them. Everybody else can stay. So now that's put us at 125 troops, which actually, is that our most that we can bring? Actually, yeah, 126. So we have a perfect amount. And now, guys, this is where we go hunt some looters. And hopefully, we will get some easy experience. Here's an army of 28. Let's get in there. So let's help the party. It's sending troops. Doesn't matter. Remember, I'm just doing this to get influence. I'm doing this to... Um, Get experience. I don't care about like taking all the glory here. I can share a battle with a with another empire. And look at this already. Boom. So we're just gonna evenly upgrade them. So we got some nice swordsmen, nice archers. And we're gonna keep going. So here's more looters over here. Let's chase them down. And I know this again, like I said, this is not the most exciting thing to watch. I know we're not waging a big war right now, but this is the kind of stuff we have to do, and I didn't want to do this off camera. I feel like I've been doing enough off camera, and uh, I just want to hang out with you guys with this whole experience and and just kind of share my thoughts as I go, but let's send in the troops here. Nice. Nobody died. Excellent. More influence, and we're slowly chipping away at this negative influence. We could take the looters, but I'm not even going to worry about it, and uh, we got a couple of you guys upgraded, so that's good. And remember, if they upgrade to four, I'm that's, you know, that's fine, too. I'm just going to keep them. And perfect. Perfect. All right. So, that's this is going well. This is going really well. And I think I'm going to do this for, like, a couple minutes. And then I'm going to go back. Oh, good. One of my companions escaped from, from being captured. He just now escaped. He was kind of captured a long time ago. Which, uh, we need to get him recruiting more troops soon. There we go. Awesome. Got more influence. And uh, once again, we got more upgrades. So, oh yeah, two. Two right here. Perfect. And then we'll take all this loot. And yeah, we'll get like, what What do you think? What's a good number? Like 100 men? 100 men? 100 tier 2 and three men defending the castle or the city i think that's a good amount and then on top of that you have the garrison force so you know they can they can kind of put up a, a defense oh my relations increased what did i do why is it increasing and decreasing what why what 
What did I do? Did one of my companions do a mission, I guess? I assume that's what happened. Alright, we got more guys who want to join, which is good. Alright, so... Oh, we're over our limit? Yeah, that's fine. We're in a castle. Okay, let's do that, and then what else are we going to do? I need to go to my clan, and I need to... <laughs> Get you, you back. He's like, oh no. If I can find him, he's he's somewhere nearby. I can probably give him troops so he doesn't get captured as easily. Uh, but let's go to the keep and manage garrison. And once again, we are going to put all tier 3 and 2 into the defense. So, let's see. How many are they at? They're at 22. So, we're like a quarter of the way there already. And let's get these archers in there. Boom. 28. And here's a tier 2. Okay. This is a tier 3. Here's a tier 3. Yeah, I mean, we're giving up a lot of units. But we're not at war right now. And worst case, you know, worst case, if we need these troops, we can always come back and put them back in our army. So it's not really a big deal. So I think that's all of them. Oh, there's a level 3 archer. So they're now at 34 men. And the garrison here, I'm sure they're happier too. Re relations increased. Okay. They're at 117 men. Okay, that's a lot of men. Well, that's because one of my companions are in there. You see that? Uh, my companion with 37 is in the city. So um, let's just keep going at it. And uh, also, while we're walking by these villages, also recruit recruits because we need to constantly keep training them, getting new ones, and, uh, you know, keep going. So, let's just look for some looters. Here we go. Ooh, I'm going to stick with the looters. They're a little easier to kill. I mean, obviously, I'm not afraid of 14 mountain bandits, but when I'm just sending in my mend... Oh, come on, fight me. Don't give up. There we go, good. There we go. Yay, one wounded. More influence. We're now in, yes, negative 69 giggity. We are finally less than 70. That's perfect. And then we got some experience here. Again, it's a slow grind. It's not that much experience. I mean, I assume they get experience in just being in the army. Being with me. Which I hope is the case. But let's, uh, oh, there's more looters. You know what? Let's start to make way, make our way towards the princess. And let's see if that's, like, kind of updated at all. Like, I don't know if I have to do anything for that. There we go. More prisoners want to join the ranks. So, yeah, we're going to make our way down to this castle. So, back to the princess. And if we see any looters along the way, I'm just going to attack them. Well, we're back at the castle. We had a couple battles along the way. Let's go talk to our beautiful princess and see if we can kind of progress with this, uh, this storyline. Because I would like to marry her in this episode. Paula, so good to see you. It's been too long. Yes, it has. Um, perhaps we should discuss a future together? Yes. Well, I've been thinking about that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yes. Um, I insist that my husband... Wait, what? Oh, okay. I, I thought she meant she has a husband. I was like, I checked. You didn't have a husband. I insist that my husband conduct himself accordingly to the highest standards. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm a man of my word. I hope that is okay. Let's see, I do what I do to alleviate suffering in this world. I hope that's enough. Okay. Ooh, success. I'm happy to hear that. I think you should try to win my family's approval. Um... I can only hope that if they come to know my virtues, they will accept me. I can only hope that if they come to know my loyalty, they will accept me. Yikes. I don't have great loyalty, but I'll go with that. Success. Boom. We're getting closer and closer. I'm happy to hear that. Uh, yes, I think I would be honored to accept your proposal. Dirthart is head of our family. Needs to give her his blessing. There's usually financial arrangements to be made. Sweetie, I got plenty of money for you, honey. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Eat, eat a nice meal. All right. Say, say your blessings. All right. Whatever. Let's go. So, we now need to talk to Death Heart. Death Heart. 
I, I never know how to pronounce his name. I should probably learn my uh, own future dad-in-law's name, right? Okay, so is that him right there? No. So we need to go find him. Let's use this. Um, he's near he this little village. So I'm excited. He's over here. So might, he might be on his way back. My lord, there he is. There's the there's the lad, the mad lad himself. Paulo, it's been a while. Yes. I would like to discuss the final terms with my marriage with Ellis. Very well then. Um to marry Ellis. What? What? That's it? This is all I have to pay him? <laughs> no way. 7,000 gold to marry her? Ellis to marry Apollo. Can we... What if I gave you all my gold? Here, let's just... Come on. Let's do at least 28,000. There you go. Yes! I I married her? Is there like a cutscene or anything? Wait a second. I'm married. I'm a married man just like that? Hold on. <laughs> Where's... uh? Yeah, she's right there. You gotta be kidding me. It was that easy? I know our charm was really good because, uh, you know, I was just setting free all of our prisoners of war and it made it really easy, but she's in Sargot? So we just have, like, I, I, I don't know. Like, I don't... <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little confused on like what just happened. Like, okay, uh, we we we're married. We're we're a married lord now. We have a queen, or an empress, as um, she will be known. So actually, let's go to the kingdoms. So Empire of Calradia, that's us. And yeah, we're married. And what is my brother up to? What is, what is my brother up to? See, I'm 36. I'm not old, but like I should have a son soon. Especially in the medieval world. We're friends. We're, we're friends with death, uh, dirt, dearth hurt. So, yeah, I'm I'm happy. All right, we got our wife. Wedding bells. I, I was kind of hoping, I'm a little disappointed. I'm not gonna lie. I was kind of hoping that we were gonna have some sort of like cutscene of a wedding. You know? Oh my god. One of our companions was captured by mountain bandits again. Alright, come on. Ah, uh, they're not fighting. I need you to fight. I need the experience. Well, I saw, yeah, 17 over here. Let's go get these guys. So, we're gonna slowly make our way back. We have a friend to the west of us. The Vlandians. Which is really good because... Maybe eventually we could become allies. Since they're not Empire, I'm never going to attack them. They don't control two-thirds of the Empire cities, which I need to do to complete this quest. So let's send troops in here. Get some good experience. More influence, which is almost... It's, it's dropping quick. I mean, having that plus one influence every day, it slowly sm snowballs up. Plus, on top of that, we're fighting looters. We're coming back, guys. We're coming back into this battle. It's or battle this this campaign, I guess. Uh, it really our only issue was with influence, and it's great to have a city too now. You know, it, it's awesome, and we're stacking that city full of a you know a great garrison, because that's you know I'm forever gonna make that my capital. You know, that is my capital city right there. Lagate, Lagate, Lagat, Lagata. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I should probably learn how to pronounce it. But yeah, that's our that's our our territory, our first city. It's a special place, special place in my heart. Now, of course, I would love to take back this castle because this was our first castle. But the Kuzates will probably go to war with them soon enough. I just need to get my influence back to a hundred or or positive, positive. All right, here's some mountain bandits running around. We could attack them. The, should we? Yeah, let's try to attack them really quick. I might... Oh, wait, wait. Escape. Oh, wait. Constitute declare war on the Northern Empire. What? I did not declare war on the Northern Empire. What nonsense is this? Okay, we need to hurry up here. Hurry up. Let's go ahead and... Uh, yep. 
just attack you, get some last minute experience. Because we're about to go into war, apparently, with the Northern Empire. I guess they don't like us for whatever reason. I mean, I guess we're a rival empire, so that makes sense. Okay, and we got some good upgrades here. And we got some people who want to join. Very much needed. Very nice. And we will go ahead and go to the city. Beef up this garrison as strong as possible. Make it as strong as possible. Man, I just got married and you're going to declare war on me like this? When I'm trying to build a family? So, let's manage, uh, manage the garrison. And... Yeah, let's just get as much as we can in this city. So we can get the Vland... I'm going to hold on to this Vlandian footman. I really like the the Vlandian infantry. They're very good. Uh, but yeah, we'll get you guys in there. You guys in there. All right. Uh, any other tier threes? You're a tier three. Uh, we'll keep the footman. All these recruits I'm going to keep. Looter. Whatever. Just have the looter. I don't even want the looter in my army. And I know I had more than this. I know I had more than this. Okay, yeah, here's here's a bunch of infantrymen. And I thought I had archers too. Uh I'm uh, all right. I'll I'll donate these archers too. It's not really donating. Again, if I ever need these men, I can go back to the city and take them. I just don't want to give away too much, especially now that a war is about to break out. But again, this is going to be a good opportunity for us to easily get some influence points and get us positive. Because we kind of desperately need to get positive here with uh, influence so we can pass. Um, that's another way to get influence. And this is, you know, when I was asking you guys for advice about influence, like what I should do. And you're like, oh, you should pass some policies that will increase your influence every day. Well, I can't because to pass it, you need influence to pass policies. So yeah, that was the problem. But anyways, guys, we are out of time. This was a lot of fun. Uh, we're turning this around quickly, which I didn't think it was going to be this quick. I thought it was going to be a much more challenging struggle. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. We're now a married man. Welcome, uh, Ellis Constantine to our great kingdom as she will be a great empress one day. Uh, but the Northern Empire is, is at war with us. And, uh, if we could grab another city from them, like possibly this one or even just a castle... That's going to be awesome. So we'll find out what happens next in the next episode. So, uh, oh, actually, let me go into here and let's go to the keep and end it like we always do. Let's go to the Lord's Hall. This is my hall. Oh, yes. Where's my princess or queen or empress? Whatever. I can't get it right. Let me sit. Can, why can't you sit here? I'll just crouch. Can I crouch? All right. That's good enough. Well, I will sit here in my throne and think about the upcoming war. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time on the battlefield.